Mr. President, this, um, this week, the Democrats are forcing yet another show vote on the so-called voting rights legislation. They, they claim the right to vote is under attack by the states, and there's nothing that could be further from the truth. Uh, ahead of the uh, 2020 elections, everyone from Vice President uh, Kamala Harris to uh, Eric Holder to Stacey Abrams uh, claimed that they were experiencing a wave of voter suppression. Now, that's very significant. It's a, a wave of voter suppression, it's as if they have to do something to change our system. And, and the facts are so clear on that. They, you know, people lie around here, but the, the facts don't lie. The Census Bureau reported that the turnout in last year's election was 66.8%. Now, that was the highest voter turnout uh, uh, of, the, of the 21st century. And the turnout was higher across all demographics as well as including uh, minorities. And more than 90% of the Americans think it's easy to vote. More than a third of them think the rules should be more stringent than they are today. And there's a good argument for that. But, uh, but uh, that, is, that argument is prevailing right now. And so once you see that the Democrats' big lie of uh, rampant voter suppression is clearly false, why are they pushing this election takeover bill? Uh, they want to nationalize elections, putting the federal government in charge of the, if something that the Constitution clearly says it belongs to the state. And uh, just as uh, a few examples of what the bill would do, it would line the pockets of candidates with taxpayer dollars in order to run for office. It would uh, restrict common sense voter ID supported by over 75% of the Americans. It would mandate mail-in ballots, allow uh, ballot trafficking. Uh, trafficking, that's when the unsupervised political operatives collect and submit absentee ballots and would make Election Day a federal holiday, costing about somewhere about uh, close to a billion dollars each time that it would be used. Uh, now, you don't have to take my word for it and how radical this is. Oklahoma's election uh, board secretary, now this, keep in mind, this as in most states, it's non-political, non-partisan in any way, and the guy's name is Paul Zierich, he has called the, uh, the, Schuster, the Schumer's legislation a, quote, recipe for chaos. Uh, Democrats can feel the American people turning against the, their agenda, and so they're desperate to rig elections in their favor, and they would do whatever means necessary, even killing rules that make the Senate the Senate. This would poison part of, bipartisan and compromise in the Senate forever. Uh, my Democrat colleagues want to, you to forget that they were for the filibuster before they were against it. Just five years ago, 33 Senate Democrats, including then Senator Harris, penned a letter demanding that we uh, defund uh, the, uh, 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 or that we defend and retain it forever. So they were demanding that we retain the, the filibuster. But now they've changed their mind, which means they either have amnesia or that they have the, see an opportunity to force their radical agenda on the American families. Uh, if Democrats get their way on the filibuster, it won't stop taking over our, our elections. Uh, they will also pass their Green, Deal, Green New Deal, their abortion on demand, amnesty, uh, they pack the Supreme Court with activists to uphold their unconstitutional agenda, and I want to close by sharing a comment on the filibuster. And the quote is, quote, getting rid of the filibuster has long-term consequences. If there's one thing that I've learned in my years here, once you change the rules and surrender the Senate's institutional power, you never get it back. Now, I didn't say that. Uh, that was said by uh, President Joe Biden. He said it just in those words, and that it might be the first time that we agree on something. Likewise, Senator Schumer also said that getting rid of the legislative filibuster would be doomsday for democracy. 
And I happen to agree with him on that too. So I've served the people of Oklahoma in the, uh, in, in the Senate longer than anyone in, in history. And I feel strongly that the one thing that has protected our dem democratic republic and ensured bipartisanship more than any other single thing is the Senate's protection of the voice of the minority. That's what we're famous for. There is no one else up around that has that as a function to, uh, to do. And yet I'm seeing the, uh, some of the things that are going on right now. Uh, uh, President Biden, now he said, and you can keep this in mind, back in, uh, in 2005, we got to keep the filibuster. And then in 2021, just the other day, he says, we got to kill the filibuster. That, I think he said that yesterday. Uh, uh, Senator Schumer, back in 2005, uh, said that killing the filibuster will be doomsday for democracy. And now Schumer wants to kill uh, the, uh, the filibuster. Uh, Senator Coons said back in 2018, I am committed to never voting to change the legislative filibuster. And now he's uh, uh, supporting killing the filibuster. Um, uh, Senator Kl Klobuchar back in 2017 said, let's keep that 60 vote threshold in place, which is the filibuster. And uh, now she said, uh, this was just a, a few days ago, quote, I would personally get rid of the filibuster. So here's what we're faced with. We know what's right and we know what's wrong. It's very clear. And yet uh, they are desperately trying to take a position that they've had for a long period of time. So we'll continue to protect it. Both the president and, the, and Senator Schumer, Schumer, Schumer are trying to kill the filibuster and we're not gonna let that happen.